Okay. Good morning, everyone. So we are continuing with chapter 11. Uh, last time we talked about total internal reflection. So we're going to continue on that. Let me use my pen. Make, make this bigger. What does this feel odd? Good job. Okay, this is this key. Okay, so um, we have two types of medium here. What, the first medium is N1, the second medium is N2. Remember, when we have two types of medium, the light will either move slower or it will move faster. We talked about this. And for N that is greater, you know that it is higher in density. Therefore, the light will go slower in um, a medium that has a higher N. And if the N is lower, <clears throat> then the speed of light will be faster. So this is what we talked about. So here we have a two types of medium and for total internal reflection to happen, N1 must be greater than N2. For example, um, you have, if you know what is an optical fiber, let me write it down. Okay, optical fiber. Let's Google it if you don't know. Mm. Fiber. Share my screen. Share, share. Where is it? Okay, it's here. So this is an optical fiber. Let me pick one image. So it doesn't look really small, right? But it's actually the the it's as thin as the hair, if you don't know. But sometimes it can be um thicker, but Typically, it's as thin as the hair. It's super thin, very, very thin. And it is made out of glass. So this is how it looks like. So when you have like a bunch of cables, I mean like a very thick cable, basically it is composed of many, many optical fibers inside. So that one cable is not one optical fiber, but inside there are like thousands or maybe hundreds of optical fiber inside. So basically you can't see it. <clears throat> they will uh, always try to protect it so that it doesn't break off uh, because it is made out of glass. It's quite fragile, but not. But it is also flexible. So it's quite flexible, but it can break. And when it breaks, it's a problem. Okay, so that is optical fiber. So optical fiber is a glass. So when we're talking about optical fiber, okay, um, if you know, uh, your internet uses fiber. Your internet. Ada yang pakai copper, copper lines. Ada yang pakai fiber. When they talk about fiber, uh, internet fiber ataupun fiber broadband, I don't know the exact term, but they will either say copper or fiber. So when they say fiber, it actually means optical fiber and they lay it down uh, inside the ground. Optical fiber. Eh? So optical fiber ni glass uh, and the optical fiber uses total internal reflection to transmit your data or your internet or whatever you call it. So it will go inside that um, super thin glass. Um, that's your data. So, so with that said, I just wanted to share with you that um, optical fiber is an application of total internal reflection and it is made out of glass. With that said, your N1 has to be greater than your N2. So imagine you have the optical fiber. This is glass, right? You know glass is like high density and outside is air. And you know air is like not dense. So your air is N equals to one. This guy has to be N greater than one. Uh, 1.5 maybe or 1.455, something around that. So for total internal reflection to happen, it has to come from a medium of high end, ataupun uh, where the light travels slower. So here we have the incident angle theta i, <clears throat> and it goes through this glass and it enters the air. Let's say this is air lah, ataupun something that has a smaller end. So when I increase my angle, the this guy gets reflected away from the normal. Mula banyak ni je, but now it's getting bigger. And then when I increase my angle, it gets even bigger and up until a point where this thing, I mean this refracted ray, is now 90 degrees with respect to the normal. 
So this guy is called the incident angle is called the critical angle for total internal reflection to happen. So with that said, we can still use Snell's law. So N1 sine theta C. This is your glass at the point the end that is bigger. And this is your critical angle. And this will be equal to, this is N2, N2 sine 90. <clears throat> okay, so sine 90 is, when you use sine 90 and N2 is the outside a medium. When you want to find out what is your critical angle. And when you your incident angle is greater than your critical angle, this is like way bigger than the theta C, your light now goes inside. I mean, it is reflected. It is called total internal mm -hmm. reflection. It's no longer refracted. It is totally reflected. Ataupun total internal reflection. Now, how does the optical fiber work? I, I told you like your data propagates inside the optical fiber, blah, blah, blah. But how does it look like, right? So let me just draw. So you know that optical fiber uses total internal reflection. So it looks like this actually. You may want to reflect, 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 tapi at the speed of light. And you know what speed of light is? Three times 10 to the eight meter per second. It's very, very fast. That is how we are using our internet now. Okay, and of course, there's a bunch of other science stuff behind it, but this is your optical fiber first. Okay, so when the light attempts to move from a medium of higher index of refraction, N1 has to be greater than N2, the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, theta incident is greater than theta critical, and critical angle theta C is defined as the incident angle that gives refraction angle of 90 degrees. So these are the characteristics of TIR. So N1 has to be greater than N2. Theta incident has to be greater than the critical angle. How do you find the critical angle? You have to equate N1 sine theta C equals to N2 sine 90. And remember, N1 has to be greater than N2 always. If this condition is not satisfied, then you would not get your total internal reflection. Now, if my light came from N2, N2 is smaller than N1, right? So if my light came from N2, I will not ever, not ever, ever have total internal reflection. Takkan terjadi. Hanya akan berlaku refraction sahaja. So it's going to move slower. This guy is N2 ni rendah daripada N1. So it's going to move slower it is going to be refracted towards the normal <clears throat> total internal refraction will not ever happen so that is a very very important condition for you to remember eh? okay moving on so critical angle uh, recap balik a particular angle of incidence will result in angle refraction of 90 so you this is your critical angle the refracted ray will move at the boundary ataupun will be propagating at the boundary and because of that we have this equation and you can solve for your sine theta c <clears throat> okay so this is an application of tir we talked about it uh, optical fibers and then this is our next part dispersion so let's take a look at this graph kalau soalan boleh interrupt me jangan biasa so here, um, I'll, my x-axis of this graph is 400 to 700, or maybe this is 100, 450. This is 350 to 700. And this is N, your index of refraction, ataupun refractive index. It is from, I don't know what this is, 1.46 and up to 1.54. So let's take a look at fused quartz first. Okay. So if you see here, um, the 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 N changes with your lambda. Your N changes with wavelength. The higher ataupun the longer your wavelength, the smaller your N. Okay, let's take a look at acrylic block. Acrylic ni, um, I think you know what acrylic is. It's kind of transparent. It looks like glass, but it's not actually glass. It's like a mixture lah. Okay, so acrylic, um, when your wavelength increases, right, from 400 to 700, the N also decreases. Sama juga kat sini. So, <clears throat> I thought N doesn't change, right? Because when we have like two mediums, 
N1 and N2, we were assuming that the index of refraction was constant. But in reality, it's not. When your light, when you shine a light, let's say this is a light, right? We didn't specify what wavelength it is. We just assumed that it's just like regular light. But in reality, light has so many wavelengths. And because of its different wavelengths, the refractive index also changes. But not so much, just a little bit, as you can see over here. So slightly jelah, so approximately uh, 1.46 to 1.47. Okay, the difference is small, but it's there. And this difference in the index of refraction with respect to its wavelength is called the dispersion. So Snell's law indicates that the angle of refraction made when light enters a material depends on the wavelength of light. <clears throat> so let's see. I told you when um, we enter a medium that is that has a higher index of refraction, okay, when n is bigger, eh, not that, listen. when n is bigger, n, your V will be slower and you would be refracted, the ray would be refracted towards the normal. Am I recording? Yes. The ray would be refracted towards the normal. So, <clears throat> So first, let's see, at 400, step at 700, we, our N is at 1.46, let's just say 1.46, right? So this is 1.46. I'm just um, trying to show you the representation here. So let's say N2 is one, eh? it's just air. And this is 1.46, this is your fused quartz and this is your normal, you will always refract or reflect or refract with respect to your normal. So here you have your incident light and you enter a medium that is higher in density at the point you have a higher refractive index. Therefore, you would be refracting towards the normal. This does not look right. Good job. Let me do it like this. Okay, this is better. So this is refracted ray towards the normal. And then when I shine a light of different wavelengths, let's say it's 400, let's use yellow now. Now it's yellow. So yellow, the N is at 1.47. 1.47 is higher than 1.46. And because of that, I shine it at the same place. And because of that, it will be refracted more towards the normal because this guy has a higher N than um, 700 when it is uh, 700 uh, nanometer in wavelength. So this V is now even more slower and your refraction is different. So this guy is different compared to this guy. Okay, so this is dispersion. The refraction is different depending on your N. And based on that principle is how you have your, what do you call this, prism. Prism. If you ever seen a prism, when white light travels into a prism, what you see is red, yellow, green, purple, violet, and so on. You see all these many colors. It is because the, the N is different for every wavelength. And when they have different ends, they would refract differently. When they refract differently, they would be not they would not be together they would be separated this is what you see the separation of the uh, rays of respective colors now why do you see these different colors because let's go back the different colors are represented by different wavelengths so your violet is maybe around 350 to 400 your red is around 700 we call this as visible light what you see is visible light, which is within this range, 350 to 700 nanometer. Okay, these are all very interesting in my opinion, but you don't have to memorize them. Okay, so violet deviates the most and red deviates the least. Why? Because they have different wavelengths. They have different lambda. Therefore, they refract differently. Uh, and this is called dispersion. What, how do I write this? Mm, therefore, they refract 
at different angles, or do we call this as dispersion? Okay, so that is your dispersion. Your N changes with respect to your lambda. Okay, so these are other applications of dispersion, a prism spectrometer, you can read on about it if you like. And of the rainbow is also an application. We will not go into detail because it's quite hard and it's not on your quiz. Okay, let's go to this example. A certain kind of glass has an index of refraction of 1.65 for blue light. Okay, it's blue light. Um, let's call this NB. Of wavelength 430 nanometer. So this is the wavelength 430 nanometer. And an index of 1.615. So this is for red light. When, it, when you are shining red light, the N is 1.615. And the wavelength is lambda for blue, lambda for red is 680 nanometer. So they have different ends because of the different wavelength. This is the same type of glass. It's just one glass, but it has different ends with respect to the lambda. If a beam containing these two colors, so this beam has these two wavelengths, is incident at an angle of 30 degrees. So let's draw your boundary. Let's draw your normal. And this guy is incident at 30 degrees with respect to the normal. So 30 is around here maybe, I don't know, 30 degrees. This is your incident light. So if a beam containing these two colors, this light has two wavelengths, is incident at an angle of 30 degrees on a piece of this glass, what is the angle between the two beams inside the glass? Okay, so basically you have to find out what is the um, angle of refraction for each, for each color. So let's just use Snell's law. <clears throat> okay, so N1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2. We want to know what is the um, theta 2. So it didn't say what is this N1? We have we know what our N2 is. These are our N2s, right? Because this is our glass. What is our N1? We're going to assume it's air, okay? So this is going to be 1. The incident of angle in air is 30 degrees. And N2, when it is blue light, it is 1.65. And I want to know what is the angle for this blue light. So theta two is equal to 17.64 degrees. This is when you use blue light. So what happens when you use red light? Alah, kenapa saya pakai warna pink? Okay, red light, N1, sine theta one, N2, sine theta two, sama je, equation sama for Snell's law. N1 is one, same incident angle because it is the same light that the light has two wavelengths. This is 30. And when we we are assuming now that this color is, we're, we're trying to find the angle for red. So 1.615 sine of <clears throat> theta 2. So theta 2 in this case is 18.03. So if I were to draw, this same light will be refracted differently because of the wavelength, right? The, when we have different wavelengths, we have different ends. Therefore, the speed is also different. Okay, so this is the light at 30 degrees. This guy will, be, ha will have an angle of 17.64 and this guy will have an angle of 18.03. Uh, this is not right. Let's make 30 bigger. This is 30. So 18. It is refracted towards the normal. 
So this is your 18 degrees. And another one would be <clears throat> okay, the basic sikit je because it is dispersion. So one is 17.64, the other one is 18.03. The 18.03 is the red. <clears throat> and the 17.64 is the blue. So the difference in angle between them would be this part over here. Okay, the, the difference in angle. So it's basically just 18.03 minus 17.64. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. So that's your answer. Any questions about this question? How I'm going, what I'm doing here? Does everyone understand what dispersion means? Yes. Um, eh? Okay. Because I had trouble understanding what dispersion was when I was learning before. Okay. Moving on to the next one. If you have any questions, please stop me. If you want me to explain again, you can ask me. Okay. Next one, 11.7, 11.6, saya skip sebab dispersion tak ada dalam quiz. Dispersion of prism tak ada dalam quiz. Example 11.7, um, diamond has an index of refraction 2.419. So this is diamond 2.419. What is the critical angle for internal reflection? So we're talking about TIR here. Remember what are the conditions for TIR? N1 has to be greater than N2. And Theta C happens when your refractive to, angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So it's asking what is the critical angle for internal reflection inside a diamond that is in air. So you have your diamond here and this is air. Air is N equals to 1. This guy is N equals 2.419. Where is the incident light? For TIR, cut n minus satu. Come on, guys. Diamond. Diamond can because it has to be greater. So the one that is greater in n will will be the place where your incident light is. So n one sine theta c equals to n two sine. 90. This guy N1 is where your incident light is. So this is 2.419. Sine theta C is your critical angle. We don't know yet. N2 is air. It says so. Sine 90 is just 1. Is it? Yeah. So, kalau guna calculator dengan berhemah, and dapat jawapan. <coughs> 24.42. So if you have, let's say this is your normal. So your normal depends on your surface, right? Okay, depends on your boundary. So let's say this is my light, no, it's yellow. So inside the diamond, it has to be greater than 24.42 for internal reflection to happen. So with respect to the normal, oh, kenapa dia curvy? Eh, kenapa dia curvy? Okay, okay, trying my best here. So with respect to the normal, let's say this is 30, it satisfies the total internal reflection condition, which has to be greater than theta C. So I will have my... PIR. So it will be reflected back inside the diamond. So if you see a diamond, if you look at a diamond, you can see like the macam, what do you call it? Um, cantik kan? Cantik. That's not right. Uh, there's like light inside the diamond, right? You, has, you see like there's a lot of colors and light inside the diamond. It is because of PIR. You see that there are many like um, Shapes, right? Macam ni lah, macam tu lah, macam tu lah, macam tu lah. I don't know how it exactly looks like. But these are all boundaries for TIR. These are all boundaries for TIR. When TIR happens, you see all those light inside this diamond and it looks really beautiful. So that is why your diamond is not like a cube. It's not like a 
triangle because they want as many boundaries as possible for the TIR to happen. So it's physics. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Next one, 11.8. A ray of light travels across liquid to glass. So this is your liquid and this is glass. If the indices of refraction for liquid and glass are, so they give us 1.75, Kenapa gelas lagi kecil? Okay, let's just go with it. 1.52 liquid for liquid and glass are 1.75 and 1.52. Okay, never mind. So this is our um, normal. And it's asking us what is the critical angle at this interface? So you have to start from the liquid your incident light has to go from the liquid to the glass because your liquid is and that has a greater end than the glass. This is a rare condition, but it is possible. So your light starts from here. It has to be it has to be beyond the critical angle for it to be here or total internal reflection to happen. So if the light is going here, you know this is your theta C. Okay, so let's do our equation, macam biasa, n1 sine theta c equals 2, n2 sine theta 2, and n1 would be the greater n, 1.75 sine theta c equals 2, n2 1.52 sine 90, because we're trying to find the critical angle. And again, theta c will be equal to 60.29, it's kind of big, 60.29. This guy has to be 60.29 for the refracted ray to be at the boundary. Did I do this right? Yeah, betul. <clears throat> okay, so what happens if I flip this? I'm always telling you guys, okay, N1 has to be the greater one, N2 has to be the smaller one. What happens if I don't follow this rule, right? So if N1 is 1.52, let's say my light starts from here, can. But it's memang tak possible kan TIR. Tapi kita tak tengok mathematically betul ke tak jadi TIR tu. So 1.52 sine theta C. I'm trying to find the critical angle for TIR. And this would be 1.75 sine 90. So critical angle always happens when the refracted, refracted ray is 90 degrees, right? So this is the theta C. Assuming, assuming that we are trying to find the TIR from 1.52 to 1.75 from glass to liquid. So if I were to try solve this, this would be one, right? And this would be 1.75 divided by 1.52. Where's my calculator? 1.75 divided by 1.52 and then inverse sign of that, I get math error. Why? This value is 1.5. 1.72 divided by, sorry, 1.75 divided by 1.52 would give me a value of 1.15. What is the maximum value for a sign? One. One. So this is 1.15. Obviously, it will give you math error. So this is another way to know whether you're doing something right or wrong. So if you see your sine theta C is equal to something that is greater than one, it is wrong. It is. It must be equal to one or less than one. This is why your N one has to be greater than N two. Then you can find your TIR angle or the critical angle. Okay. So that is. I showed you mathematically. Um, it's not possible to calculate TIR using Snell's law. So please use that as part of your logic and reasoning. Okay. Next one. Eleven point nine. A fiber optic cable, application of TIR, N equals to 1.5, is submerged in water. So this is your optic fiber and this is water. N is 1.5 and this is N equals to 1.33. For TIR to happen, it has to go from here to here. 
Okay, buruk-buruk je dulu. What is the critical angle for light to stay inside the cable? For critical, for light to stay inside the cable, it has to go, it has to undergo TIR. So, we need to find the critical angle here. So, N1 has to be greater than N2. Sine theta C, we're trying to find the angle to keep it inside. N2, sine 90. So, N1 is 1.5, has to be greater. Sine theta C, 1.33, and this is 1. 1.33 divided by 1.5 gives me something that is less than 1. So, it is correct. So, theta C would be something, if I'm using my calculator, but I'm not because I already done it, 62.46. Okay, any questions so far? No questions? Everyone's okay? All right, no questions. Okay. So, let's take a five-minute break because we're going to continue with lens and mirror. Five minutes, seven lah, seven. Seven minutes. What time is it? 10.50. Okay, so 10.57, please come back. We're going to continue our last part of, sorry, this is like second last part of chapter 11. Ada mirror and then lens and then we're done with chapter 11. If you have any questions, you can ask me. So I'm looking at the quiz. Ada orang dah try. That's good. Buat slow-slow je. Sambil belajar, sambil buat. Okay, there's no pressure. We don't want you to be pressured because there's a lot of things going on. Kelas lain ada yang dah nak siap dah pun. Dasyatnya. I mean, not everyone are just like one or two students. Okay, nanti saya jawab and right. Um, that's a good question.
Okay, welcome back. It's 10.57. Okay. So, Rai um, asked me a question, doctor, for dispersion. Maksudnya, light tu is shown at certain wavelengths. Ke ataupun dalam satu light tu ada banyak-banyak wavelength. Because that causes it to be refracted banyak-banyak macam tu. Okay, in your light, for example, your torch light, it's white, right? Your torch light is white. But when you shine it through a prism, the light goes through a prism, what you see is lots of colors. So when you try to make sense of that, it's actually that white light has many wavelengths. So the light that you're seeing all around you is composed of many wavelengths. So that is your answer. Dalam satu, dalam satu light tu ada banyak-banyak wavelength. Kalau kita nampak macam uh, nak warna lampu tu betul-betul merah, then maybe it has one wavelength. Ataupun betul-betul biru, then it's one wavelength. Ataupun betul-betul green, macam pekat lah green dia, then maybe it's one wavelength. But when it is like, uh, white or like a combination of colors, then you know that there is several wavelengths inside the light. So, kalau light yang betul-betul ada satu wavelength saja, we call it as monochromatic light. Mono eh. Mono means one, right? So, monochromatic light. If it's not called monochromatic light, chances are it has many wavelengths and it will cause dispersion. That's a good question. Doctor, what about LED light yang banyak-banyak color tu? LED light yang banyak color. Senyap, eh? Oh, yang macam blinking tu eh? The... You mean like kedai tom yum tu ke? Macam tu ke? Is it Rachel? Is that what you're asking me? Yang can change color. Okay, so yang tu, um, I don't know the mechanism. It's either they change, it can change wavelength of the light that it emits. Um, certain materials can do that. It can change the wavelength that it emits. Um, Kalau dia tukar wavelength, maksudnya warna dia berubah lah kan. Or it has like uh, different LEDs inside the lamp um, whereby if you want it to be blue, it will become blue. And if you want it to be red, it will be red. So ada banyak cara lah untuk achieve these colorful lights sebenarnya. So it depends on the technology that they use. Some are advanced, some are like um, straightforward je. Macam banyak-banyak LEDs of different colors. So the technology, um, the higher the technology, the ma lagi mahal lah benda tu selalunya. Okay, so if it's cheap, you know that <coughs> it's just straightforward mechanism je lah. You have like a bunch of LEDs of different colors inside the lamp. Okay, so those are really good questions. Um, I don't know why I didn't ask those questions when I was a student because I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was scared of physics. To be honest. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to share my screen again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Participants can now see your application. What does that mean? Okay. Am I still recording? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to continue with our second last subtopic. It's called lens. Sorry, it's called mirror. We're going to learn about mirror first. Okay. So there's two types of things. Otherwise, we're going to learn about lenses and mirrors. Do do. So what is lens? Lens. Um, you have like contact lens, the one that you're wearing in your eyes. You have like glasses. Those are lenses as well. You have what else? Um, apa yang detektif tu? What do you call this? Um, lupa dia macam ni. Magnifying glass. Ah yes, perpanggil <laughs> detektif. Ah uh, yes, magnifying glass. Thank you. Mm, and so those are lenses. You the light can pass through those glass. You can that if you shine light from here, it will go through. But for mirrors, it will not go through. It will be reflected. Tengok macam ni. So this is your ray of light. It will be either converging to a point converge to this point or it will be diverging diverging so for mirrors it does not let you does not let light pass through so behind the mirror there is basically no light at all but for lenses you can have both sides 
uh, to have light. So if your incident is this way, you would have it pass through. This is converging. And if you have light incident from here, you would have it diverging. And this is called diverging lens. Lah. And if your incident light is from here, if your incident light is from this side, it will still go through. And from here, it will still go through. But for mirrors, uh, no chance. There's nothing going to be going to happen. <laughs> Excuse me. So those are the like main difference between lens and mirror. One lets light pass through. The other reflects only. No light behind the mirror. Excuse me. Okay. So we use ray diagrams to locate and determine the properties of image formed by mirrors and lenses. We use mirrors or lens equation to accurately determine the position of the image. Okay, these are really boring. Next. So light travels in a straight line path. We know this. When we, when we draw the light, we always draw it in a straight line, right? And when it refracts or reflects, then only would, we would have these angles, right? But otherwise, we assume it to be a straight line. So ray approximation is used to represent beams of light. So this is your beam. It is imaginary line that we draw to make our life easy. A ray of light is an imaginary line drawn along the direction of travel. So if this is your incident light, you start from here. If your incident light starts from here, you draw over here. So it depends. Uh, they are graphical constructions which tell the overall nature of the image. So why do we have ray diagrams? Because we want to approximate where our image is formed and it works. They can also be used to check the parameters calculated from the mirror lens equation. And for this is especially helpful to optom, optomet, op, optometrists, 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 yes. Those specialists, they make the glasses for your glasses, right? They make the lens for your glasses and they have to know all these things before they can make the lens. So they have like special equipment, but they have to know the equations and how, how big should the lens be? How thick should it be? Uh, what is the refraction? You know, all those stuff. So optometrists akan belajar benda-benda macam tu in more depth, okay? Next, so the one that we are going to learn for our syllabus is spherical mirrors only. Spherical, eh? spherical meaning like membulat lah. Membulat, it's either going to be concave this guy, it is like a cave, caving inside. Macam cave kan? Gua, masuk gua. Concave. And then convex is, um, what do you call this? Mm. Cembung. Cembung. Dia suka menunjuk lah. Dia suka tunjuk. Okay, so this guy, dia malu. Masuk dalam. This guy, dia suka menunjuk. So only one side of this mirror. Um, is reflective. Eh? So for convex, it is this side. It must be the side where they suka show off to, ataupun like cembung. Cembung, I hope cembung is like convex. Lah. I, I hope I'm not screwing it up. And then this guy, the one that curves inside is the reflective part of the concave mirror. They are spherical, right? Because they make a circle. Now, what about the mirrors in your bedroom? Are they concave or convex? What do you see in the mirror? Is it like spherical? Flat. It's flat. Plain it's actually a plain mirror. Plain mirror. It's not spherical mirror. So don't get confused. When we're talking about spherical mirrors, we're not talking about the mirrors in your bedroom. Eh? It's not that. So those in your bedroom are plain mirror. Uh, what you see in the mirror is basically yourself. There is no like magnification. There is no like making you small ke apa ke unless you have like a special makeup mirror that makes you, makes your eyes bigger because not, you know, makeup, all the stuff. So those are different types of mirror. But the one that you have in your bedroom is just a plain mirror. You see yourself as you are. Kalau nampak benda lain tu, seek help. I hope not. Okay, so concave and convex. So this is an example of convex mirror. So an example is your side mirror. Okay, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. So it's, it doesn't give you the actual distance. 
dia nampak lagi jauh sebenarnya dekat nampak lagi jauh objects in mirror are closer than they appear you you see you look at it it looks as if it's far away but actually it's just behind you and then you also have this convex mirror dekat junction yang macam ada blind spot so convex mirror are used to help drivers avoid accident no Okay, so those are example of convex and then we have concave. Concave yang membulat ke dalam, dia malu. Kau pergi masuk gua, whatever, cave, right? Okay, dia malu. Okay, so dentists use concave mirrors. It's slightly curved inside if you notice. And um, they look at the teeth using your concave mirror and then your torchlight also have concave. If you look at the torchlight, buang dia punya yang depan tu, buang dia punya glass slide, glass part of it you can see that there is a curve inside, it's concave. And then solar cooker, it is caved because it has to converge the light at one point so that they boleh masak kat situ. Sama juga, headlight of car, it has to converge at one point to give you that intense beam. If it is diverging, then it's not going to be really intense. So it has to be converging. Okay, moving on. So focal point of spherical mirror. So parallel rays from a distant object. So when I draw my rays like this, like straight line without any object inside. Nampak straight line je, mana object dia? So this means that the object is at infinity. At infinity. So ni jauh lah. From far away and I'm just drawing the rays, incident rays. But sometimes you have your object and it would not give you like all these rays. If you have your object, it would look like this. This one, and then this, and you write your object, maybe an arrow. So you would have like your rays only one, oops, straight line. And depend lah, macam mana kita nak lukis um, kita punya ray diagram nanti. But if there is no object inside, this is your object tadi. There is no object inside, and they just give you like a bunch of rays like this. It means that the object is at infinity. So now let's look at the focal point. If you can see over here, the rays of light they hit the mirror and they are reflected. This is what a mirror does, but they reflect at towards a certain point. They reflect towards a certain point. This point is called the focal point. This point is called the focal point. And the distance from V to F, ataupun we call this O, and we call this place as pole, macam origin lah, lebih kurang. So we call this O or V, dua-dua boleh. Um, so the distance between O to F is called the focal length. Am I using crayon? And then two times the focal length is your center of curvature. Let me write that using pen. Center of curvature. Center of curvature. And they will call this as, from the pole to C, they call this as radius of curvature. But if you don't remember the center of curvature, ke, radius of curvature, ke, and just call it curvature, it's sama je sebenarnya. It's just terms. As long as you know how to draw the ray diagrams, it's good enough. Okay, so again, the distance from O, the pole, to the focal point is called the focal length. The distance of the, from the pole to the center of curvature is called the radius of curvature. And F is always half of C, or C is always 2 times F. So the distance must be twice. The distance must be twice. So this is the, this is the distance. Dua kali ganda. From here to here is dua kali ganda F. So this is converging mirror. Kenapa? Because when it reflects the light, it is converging to the focal point. So this is called the concave. Nampak kan? Dia gua. Dia masuk ke dalam. Dia converge. Ikut je shape dia. Dia nak reflect ke dalam lah kan? Okay. So now we are talking about con convex lens. Convex lens. Convex mirror. <clears throat> this is concave. Okay. So let's look at convex mirror. So convex mirror, 
the rays come from infinity because the object is an infinity and it also has to reflect. And as you can see, the shape allows it to reflect divergingly. The tak converge lah. But it actually converges behind the mirror. It actually converges behind the mirror. So for a convex mirror, the focal point is behind the mirror. Seems odd, but it is what it is. And this is your focal point and this is your center of curvature. It is behind the mirror. I told you there is no light behind the mirror. So we call this area as virtual. If we have like the F or the C behind the mirror where the light cannot pass through, this is called a virtual focal point at the virtual curvature. And I don't know. Tu je lah, virtual lah. Virtual lah. Tak nak confuse kan korang. Okay, let's stop at virtual. Okay, moving on. So the distance from the mirror to the focal point is called focal length. We already discussed this. The focal length is half the radius of curvature. And uh, for concave mirror, the focal point is in front of the mirror. So this is real. This is where the light pass goes through and is reflected. It is at the same place as the light. Therefore, it is real. But if your focal point and your center of curvature is not at a place where light can pass through, it is called virtual. Okay. And convex mirror has a focal point behind the mirror. It diverges the light. But this diversion ada tempat dia, dia datang daripada focal point. Okay. So if you can't remember how it should like reflect uh, either converging or diverging, just look at the shape. So this shape, uh, if I if I shine light, it will follow this boundary, right? So shine light, follow this boundary, shine light, follow this boundary, shine light, follow this boundary. Salah lukis pula. Shine light, follow this boundary. So anggaran pun nampak. Kita boleh nampak that the light should be converging because of the curve shape. And for the diverging, sorry, for the convex mirror sama juga, you have light passing through, it should be reflected, it will follow the boundary because the boundary depends on the normal of the surface. It's normal, normal, normal. So follow the normal, follow the normal. <clears throat> so you can see that it is diverging just based on the shape. If you can't remember, lah, this is like your last resort, please. But please remember that concave has a real focal point and convex has a virtual focal point behind the mirror. Okay, so this is how it looks like. The focal point of converging mirror is on the same side as the object or the incident light. The focal point is real and the focal length is positive. So when it is in front of the mirror or real, the value will be positive F. When it is behind the mirror, the value is negative F or virtual. So here is the way you should draw rays in a ray diagram. So you start with the principal axis. Principal axis extends, it's just a straight line. And then you label your pole. The pole is where you put your mirror. So you put your mirror here and you put the curve. If it's concave, you put it like this. If it's not, if it's convex, you put it like this. Depends on what mirror you're using. So this is your pole. And you draw your object. Here are the object that tak, tak ada. So, and then the next step is to know what is your focal length or your focal point. So you label your F and also your C must be twice that length from the pole. Sama juga untuk diverging lens, diverging mirror. You draw your principal axis. You draw your mirror. This is your pole. And remember your focal point and C must be behind the mirror. So this is where your incident light, you have to define it. Incident light, ataupun object kat mana. Then baru label your F. If you don't define this earlier on, you wouldn't know where your focal point is. Uh, because you need to know where is your front and back, right? So that is how you draw it. <clears throat> okay, so how do you draw the ray diagrams? So we have two rays that we can depend on to find out our image. So ray one is drawn parallel to the principal axis. Okay, this is my 
O, this is my focal point, and this is my mirror. So I put my object here, contoh. Let's use pencil. So this is my ray coming from here to here. The ray one is drawn parallel to the principal axis. Okay, this is parallel and is reflected back through the focal point. So again, mirror has to reflect the light. So if it is going to be reflected, it needs to go F. Macam tu. Tapi lukislah straight-straight pakai pembaris. So straight line reflected into the focal point. Ray number two is drawn through the center of curvature. So I need to define my center of curvature. It needs to be twice F. Agak-agak kat sini lah. Okay. So it has to go through the center of curvature and is reflected back onto itself. This is going to be hard. Kejap. Let's go for the actual diagram. I already did it here. So this is ray number one straight line and then reflected into the focal point. This one is through the center of curvature. So it starts from the top of the image. Tadi kan saya letak saya punya objek kat sini kan? Okay, let's see how different it is. Let's do green for ray number two. So it has to go through the center of curvature. So it starts from the top. Kat situ. So where does it converge? So you just extrapolate. Sampai jumpa a point where it meets. Hmm, kan dah cakap susah. So you extrapolate until you find a point where it meets. So what happens to my image? It is a giant. So this is my image. It is magnified and it is virtual because it is at the back of the mirror. Okay, so this is like a really bad drawing. Kita go for like actual ones, eh? So if I put my object behind the center of curvature, ray number one here, and then ray number two passes through C and then back onto itself, where does it intersect? Here. I started from the top of the object. Where it intersects will also show my, the top of my object. This is very important. You start at the top of your object, where it intersects is also your top of the object. So if this is your top of the object, you know it's inverted. So if you start from here, tengah-tengah object, eh? ray number one goes through focal point, ray number two goes through center of curvature, back onto itself, oops. So where does it really intersect? Hmm. Here, lebih kurang lah kan? But here, I cannot label it as an arrow because I started from the center of my object. So what I'm getting is actually the center of my object. Patutnya dekat sini lah, tapi saya punya lukisan tak tepat kan? So I should get this part. Sekejap. I should be getting this part. Sama tak? Lebih kurang kan? So it is very important that you start your ray at the top so that your life is easy. So start from the top, you would get the intersection for your top of the object. Okay, I hope that is clear for everyone. Start from the top, okay. So draw principal axis, place the mirror, mark the focal point and center of curvature. Place the object here. The first ray is drawn parallel to the first principal axis, goes through the F. The second ray is drawn through the C and back onto itself. Where does it intersect? Over here. Okay. So the radius of curvature is twice the focal length, very important. The focal point and center of curvature are real for concave mirror because it is in front of the mirror. Therefore, it is real. This part is real. Kalau kat belakang ni, jadi virtual. Okay, next one. This is for a convex mirror. You draw your principal axis, place the mirror, Mark the focal point and center of curvature. It should be behind the mirror, here and here. Place the object. It should be in front of the mirror. Kalau letak belakang mirror, tak nampak apa-apa lah kan? So you have to put your object in front of the mirror so that it can actually reflect something. The first ray is drawn parallel to the principal axis. So here, your first line, your first ray, and then it is refracted, reflected 
as if it is coming from the focal point. So instead of going through the focal point, but your light cannot pass through, right? Instead of going through it, you imagine. You imagine it to go through. So you can only imagine it. So it's like dot, dot, dot here. But it is in reality reflected in the same direction as your focal point. Kat belakang ni tak ada light lalu. So we can only like speculate. Okay, speculate. It's extrapolate. Okay. So dot, dot, dot. And then this is where your reflected light punya direction. Then the second one. Sama juga, goes through the sea and then back onto itself. Where does it intersect? Over here. And again, your sea over here has to be dot, dot, dot sebab dia imaginary je. Okay. Kat luar ni je yang baru light. Betul-betul ada. So it intersects over here. This is the top of your image. It is small. Tadi magnified. This is small. So the focal point and the center of curvature are virtual for convex mirror. So what can we conclude here? Oh, belum lagi. So if the object distance is greater than the radius of curvature, maksudnya behind C, then what you get is inverted real. Okay, real sebab di depan mirror. Real, inverted terbalik and also smaller. Kecil lah kan? You can already see that it is way smaller than the object. But if you put your object in front of the focal length, what you get is virtual because it is behind the mirror. It is upright, sama, sama orientation as your object, upright and larger ataupun magnified. But for convex mirror, it is always at all distance, it will always be virtual, upright and smaller. If you can't remember this, Remember cermin dekat 7-Eleven tu. Kan ada kalau masuk dalam pintu 7-Eleven ada macam cermin kat atas tu kan. You always see yourself as like this little dude inside this mirror. That is your convex mirror. It is always virtual. It is always upright and it is always smaller. You're always going to see your little self inside that mirror in 7-E. So that is your convex mirror. If you can't remember lah. Um... So convex mirror dia takkan berubah. No matter where you are, you are far away, you are like depan mata mirror ni, it will always be virtual, upright and smaller. But for concave, you have like a bunch of conditions whereby you can have the image magnified, you can have the image inverted, you can have the image upright, you can have the image, <coughs> um, what else? Smaller, okay. So to summarize, this is the table, um, U that is greater than 2F ataupun greater than C, you will get real inverted and diminished image. U that is greater, sorry, U that is equal to 2F ataupun, this is C, sorry, this is greater than C ataupun equal to C, you will get real inverted and same size. If your object is placed at less than 2F or but greater than F, Kalau F, kalau C kat sini and F kat sini, objek tu dekat sini, tengah-tengah ni. So, your image will be real, inverted and magnified. So, real, inverted, diminished. This is your object. Macam ni. So, real, inverted, same size. Same size. I should use a different color. Ni semua objek. This is U. For your image, it's called V. What color would show up, not show up nicely? Mm, let's use green. Okay, so real inverted and diminished. So kecil terbalik. Tapi depan mirror. Depan mirror. Okay, and then real inverted, same size. Real depan mirror, inverted, terbalik, same size. Dia sama tapi terbalik. Okay and then real inverted magnified. Alamak susahnya ni. Real depan mirror, terbalik dan besar. Then no image. Tak ada. And then U that is less than F ataupun dekat sini lah. Ni mirror kan. Virtual upright and magnified. Virtual maksudnya image dekat belakang. Virtual, 
upright sama orientation and magnified besar. So for convex mirror semua semua distance virtual upright diminish 711 eh. Ingat yang tu je lah. Saya selalu ingat yang tu je. Okay, next one. The spherical mirror equation. 1 over u plus 1 over v equals to 1 over f. U is the u or p is the object distance. Sometimes they use 1 over p plus 1 over q equals to 1 over f. Ataupun 1 over u plus 1 over v equals to 1 over f. Both are the same. So u or p is the object distance from the pole. V or Q is the image distance from the pole and F is the focal length from the pole. So here, this is our mirror. Our mirror is our pole. And our focal point, sorry, our F. F I can't see the F. It's not here. So F must be like separuh C, kan? Okay, so this is your F distance. Where is your H? Where is your U? U is your object. So I'm assuming this is it. So this is your distance of object from the pole. And then 1 over V. V is your distance of image formed. Sometimes they give it to you. Sometimes you have to find it yourself using this equation. So this is the distance. Dari sini ke sini. Distance dia. From here to here. Ada sini. So this is your distance V. So it can be meter, centimeter. If everything is in centimeter, you can keep it that way. But if you feel like you're going to get confused, just convert everything to meters. Okay? Boleh. Dua-dua boleh. Tapi make sure if this guy is centimeter, semua centimeter. But if you prefer to use it in meters, then use everything in meters. Cannot have satu centimeter, satu meter, then it would be wrong. Okay? You have to like standardize the lens punya units. Okay. And again, if your U or V is in front of the mirror, it will be positive value. If it is behind the mirror, it will have a negative value. Positive if it is in front, negative if it is behind. So positive is where the light is. So light always is in front of the mirror and is reflected in front of, of the mirror. That is how a mirror works. So th this part of the mirror is always going to be denoted as the positive side or the real side. Yang belakang tu macam dark side dia lah. So it is called a virtual. Okay. Hmm. Okay, jap. Sikit lagi and then we'll take a break. The size of the image can be expressed as its magnification. So just now we talked about we, this equation. We have another equation which is magnification. M is equal to the height of the image over the height of the object. This is positive. Eh? It is equal to minus, minus. Selalu orang tertinggal minus ni. Minus V over U. This side is positive. This side is negative. Please take note. This is the height of the image. This is the height of the object. Minus V over U. What is V? V is the distance of the image from the pole. U is the distance of the object from the pole. Kat sini ke sini, U. Kat sini ke sini, V. So H is positive if the image is upright. H is positive if the image is upright. And H is negative if the image is inverted. Okay, so let's say... Um, this is your image, right? So it will have negative maybe 5 cm. Kita ukur dia dapat 5 cm. Yang ni tak tahulah 7 cm kot. So H is positive if the image is upright. H is negative if the image is inverted. So I put it into my equation. Minus 5 cm over 7 cm. So this is how I use the, equa the equation for magnification. So I know that. I would get something that is less than 1 and a negative value. So negative value tells me that the image is inverted. And something that is less than 1 tells me that it, the image is smaller. So berapa ni? 5 per 7. 5 bahagi 7. Eh, silap kau kereta. 5 bahagi 7. 
0.71. I get minus 0.71. This value tells me that my object is inverted sebab negatif. Tapi because it is less than 1. Magnitude eh? Less than 1. Magnitude sahaja. Then I know it is diminished. Smaller. Smaller than the object. Okay. So jangan confuse lah. When you see like minus 2, you say oh dear smaller sebab dia minus. No, that's not right. So the minus tells you inverted atau upright. The value magnitude greater than 1 atau less than 1 ataupun equal to 1 tells you the amplification or the magnification either besar atau kecil. Okay, so those are two different things. Okay, so let's do an example. But I'm tired. Let's take like five minute break. Five minute break will come back at 11.40. Kita nak habiskan chapter 11 kan hari ni. So let's take a lot of breaks. Kalau soalan boleh tanya.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, I hope you are back. So let's continue with uh, problems. Nanti boleh pakai untuk quiz. Okay, so example 11.10, a virtual image is formed 20 centimeter from a concave mirror. Now remember concave mirror, the focal point is real. Well, a focal point real, then your center of curvature is also real. Lah. Focal point is real. For a convex, the focal point is not real. Concave mirror converges, convex mirror diverges. Converges like. Terbaliklah, kalau convex terbaliklah, uh, diverging and also the focal point is virtual. So, okay, a virtual image. Now, it's telling us the virtual, it's a forming a virtual image, which means that the image is formed behind the mirror. So, if I draw my principal axis, this is my mirror. <clears throat> and this is the front of my mirror over here. This is the real part and this is the virtual Part. So my image is formed 20 centimeter from a concave mirror. So we check up distance. Distance dari pada mirror tu ataupun the distance from the pole is 20 centimeter. This is the image. Um, from a concave mirror having a radius of curvature of 40 centimeter. So it's telling us the C is 40 centimeter. We should label this as C. This is 40 centimeter. When you know what your C is, you, all, you also know what is your F. So your F is going to be 20 centimeter. It's going, always half of C. So this is 20 centimeter and I label this as F. So the image is formed, this is I. Image is formed 20 centimeter behind the mirror because it tells us it is a virtual image. And the object, we don't know. So find the position of the object. So I can try to use the ray diagram, but I have a simpler way to, to find out, which is using the equation. One over U plus one over V equals to one over F. So what is our C? Our C is 40 centimeter or 0 0.4 meter. Let me write this somewhere else. So C is 40 centimeter or 0 0.4 meter. F is 20 centimeter or 0 0.2 meter. Dua-dua boleh pakai. And it tells us the distance from the mirror to the image, which is V, is 20 centimeter. But the distance is virtual. Dia belakang mirror. So it should be minus 20 centimeter or minus 0 0.2 meter. Now I can use this equation in meter or I can just use it in centimeter. Dua-dua boleh. I'm going to use it in centimeter. 1 over u is what we're trying to find. This is our unknown. Plus 1 over minus 20. Now people always uh, forget to put the minus for our virtual things. When you hear the word virtual je ataupun behind the mirror ataupun convex punya focal Dah kena tahu dah negatif. Sometimes that, that is how they trick you. So 1 over u plus 1 over minus 20 centimeter. And the focal point should also be in centimeter. So it is 20 centimeter over here. So my u. <clears throat> so if I bring this guy to the other side, I would have 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 centimeter. And I would get 2 over 20. See lah. 1 over u equals to 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20. This becomes 2 over 20 or 1 over 10. And this is 1 over u. Therefore, my u is 10 centimeter. <clears throat> this is 1 over 10. Eh? So 1 over u is equal to 1 over 10. Therefore, my u is 10, 10 centimeter. So 10 centimeter, it is a positive value. It tells me that the object is in front of the mirror. Okay, so when you get this answer, you have to know what it means. If it's positive, it is real. If it is negative, it is virtual or behind the mirror. Okay, so a convex spherical mirror. So now they tell you it's a convex. So immediately you have to remember F must be negative. Virtual, eh? must be virtual or negative in uh, sign, negative value. 
the focal length is 15 centimeter. So they tell you the F is 15. They didn't tell you it's negative. You have to know it's a convex, therefore it's a negative 15. Is for is to form an image 10 centimeter from the mirror. Now, what is the characteristic of an image formed by convex mirror? Do you guys remember? Virtual upright diminish. Wow, virtual upright diminish, V U D. Virtual upright diminish. Okay. So a convex mirror produces virtual upright and diminished image. Image by convex. Virtual upright and diminished. So they tell you it's virtual. I thought I might not highlight any. Virtual, eh? virtual, kena negative value. So with that said, our equation will be 1 over u plus 1 over v equals to 1 over f. My f, we already know it's negative. Our v should also be negative. And it tells us it's 10 centimeter away from the mirror. So v is minus 10 centimeter. Kena minus juga. Where should the object be placed? That is our unknown. Minus 10 equals to 1 over minus 15. I would get my U as, don't know. Let's see the answer. So here we got, um, soalan tadi ya, dapat 10 cm, betul. So kat sini 1 over F equals to 1 over U plus 1 over V. The F is negative. The V is also negative. And the answer is positive 0 0.3. What does positive mean? It means it is real or in front of the mirror. And it says that it is 0 0.3 meter ataupun 30 centimeter front of the mirror. So if I were to draw it, ni convex, betul. So my object would be here and it would be 30 meter in front of the, 30 centimeter in front of the mirror. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Positive means um, real. Okay, next one. A two centimeter high object. So it's give, giving us height. Height, H. Eh? So it's giving us height of the object. HO is two centimeter. It's placed 10 centimeter in front of a mirror. So we don't know what mirror it is. So it is placed 10 centimeter away from the mirror. So from here to here, it is 10 centimeter. Okay, um, 10 centimeter. Okay, what type of mirror and what radius of curvature are needed to create an upright image that is four centimeter high? Upright image that is four centimeter high. So again, kita nak tahu dia concave ke convex kan? So convex, kita dah tahu dia akan bagi kita virtual, upright and also diminished. This guy is telling us the image is four centimeter. Object block dua. This is magnification. Magnification will not ever happen for a convex. We already know it's a converging mirror ataupun concave. So our answer right off the bat should be concave. If this is not obvious enough for you, kita buat equation lah. So I'm going to buat equation pun. Um, two centimeter high object, that is your HO. And your HI is going to be four centimeter upright. So the positive four centimeter. Okay. What radius of curvature are needed to create an upright image? Okay. So we know our equation magnification is equal to hi over ho equals to um, minus p over minus q over p at put minus v over u. Yeah, come from my Mm, okay, it's this one. V over u. This guy, image, v. This guy, object, u. Kena sama. Okay, so hi over ho equals to minus, benda alam ni ada minus eh, minus v over u. So we have our 2, we have our 4 here. So 4 over 2, dua-dua positive, minus v over u. It tells us that this object is placed 10 centimeter in front of the mirror. It's going to be positive. It is in front, it is real. So u is positive 10 
centimeter and your V is your unknown. So, kita ada equation ni, we can solve for V. So, V should be something, you know. So, V is 2 times 10 times minus 1, minus 20 centimeter. So, your image is virtual. Your image is virtual, it is a negative and it is 20 centimeter away from Eh, kita nak cari radius of curvature. So, this is V. Okay. So, now we have to find out what is the F. 1 over U plus 1 over V equals to 1 over F. So, 1 over U. Do we know what U is? It is 10 centimeter. So, V is 1 over minus 20. It is equal to 1 over F. F is something. Salah je jawapan saya ni. Ke mana saya silap kan? Eh? 2 kali 20 V. Property eh. Property. Kalau kita yang F tu kena times 2 kan? F tu kena times 2. Oh yes, betul. You're right. So this is 20 cm. So C should be 40. You're right. It's not asking us about the F. It's asking us about the C. You're right. Thank you so much. So first, what we did was we know what is the height of the object and then height of the image. Okay? And we know this equation, magnification equals to HI over HO equals to minus V over U. And then from here, we know that our U has a distance of 10 centimeter from the pole ataupun from the mirror. So we put that inside here. We get our V as minus 20 and then we put it inside our equation. Ada cara lagi senang ke? I don't know. Doctor, saya nak minta. Okay, sure. Sure, sila. Bye-bye. So, 1 over 10 plus 1 over minus 20 equals to 1 over F. So, the thing that people selalu silap, what is the minus sign? Selalu tertinggal. So, make sure you don't get um, forget about that. And of course, the one that I just made mistake just now, which was assuming that it's asking for F, but it's asking for C. Okay. So hopefully everyone understands. Okay, next one. The mirror was concave, R is 40. Okay, betul. Eh, jap, sila. Tak jawapan dia. So they use the M equation, dapat minus 20. Lepas tu pakai ni. Oh, sama je lah. Tak ada cara shortcut lain dah kot. I don't know if there is. Okay, moving on. So, we're done with mirrors. Hopefully, you can answer the questions. Now, we're moving on to the last part that we're going to learn for this chapter, which is thin lenses. Okay, so again, I told you lenses allows light to pass through. Uh, compared to mirrors, they reflect. So, if you have light, they, this is supposed to converge. If you have light, they are supposed to reflect. Okay, tapi lenses, it get, lets you pass light through such as your contact lens, such as your glasses and um, magnifi magnifi magnifying glass and stuff like that. I don't know what this is, but it's a lens. Okay, moving on. A thin lens consists of a piece of glass or plastic. It can be both. Sorry, it can be either one. With each of its two refracting surfaces is a segment of a sphere or a plane. So, dia cakap kat sini, it can either be membulat, satu, I mean, one side is membulat, the other side is plain, flat, and it can be dua-dua membulat. Macam ni, ni dua-dua membulat, yang ni seorang membulat, satu plain, seorang, dua-dua orang membulat, ni pun membulat. I don't know why I call it membulat. Sounds like suspicious. Okay, so it can be both, sorry, it can be either both membulat ataupun seorang bulat, seorang flat. It can't be dua-dua flat. Then you won't get lens. Okay? Then you would get, I don't know, you get a window. Okay, converging and diverging lens. Parallel rays from a distant object passes through convex lens and converge to a point called focal point. So previously, we saw that for mirrors, okay, kita buat recap sekejap je. Concave is a converging mirror. 
for lens, it is the opposite. For lens, your convex lens is the converging mirror, a converging lens. So you have your ray of light passing through and it will converge to your focal point behind the lens. <clears throat> so convex lens adalah converging. Kalau mirror, concave adalah converging. So parallel rays from distant object passes through concave lens and diverge. So this is your rays and your focal point is in front of the mirror. Kat depan ni. So dia punya light rays akan diverge. Again, this is imaginary because your lens is not supposed to reflect, right? It's supposed to let the light pass through. So this is imaginary. And what goes through is actually as if it coming, it is coming from the focal point. Okay. So ada tak benda yang kita boleh ingat kat sini? Hmm, how would we remember the shape? So concave mirror, we saw that it was like this and we followed the shape and it would converge in front of the mirror. Kan? This is our ray and the purple is the reflection. But for lenses, how do we remember the shape for converging versus diverging? So this is a convex lens. Dia kembung. Sama juga. Dia kembung. Kalau mirror pun dia kembung kan? Mirror untuk convex. But for lens, dua-dua belah kembung. Kalau mirror sebelah aja, Sebab sebelah aja lah yang berfungsi pun kan? Kalau lens, dua-dua kembung. And your light depends on the boundary. So tengok boundary mana yang dia lalu. This is the boundary that it follows. And this is your ray of light. Dia akan follow shape boundary ni. Sama macam kita nampak concave mirror kan? But in this case, it is a convex lens. So the one that dia sentuh dulu, it will follow that shape. Do cara cheating lah. You just have to memorize it anyway. So for a concave uh, lens, this it is supposed to diverge, right? So your rays start like this and please follow the first boundary that you encounter ataupun the light encounters. So it is supposed to converge belakang lens kan? But of course lens does not reflect. So what happens is that it will diverge the passing light. And it as if it comes from the focal point. Okay. So again, yang ni ikut follow yang the boundary that it passes. And for <coughs> mirror, concave is your converging. For lens, convex is your converging. Kalau mirror, dia converge depan mirror. Kalau lens, dia converge behind the mirror. Terbalik eh, terbalik. Okay, moving on. So this is an example of real life scenario for lens. This is a converging and we know converging lens akan, not akan berada, nama dia ialah convex lens. And this is diverging. Nampak macam tak diverge sangat tapi sebenarnya dia diverge. Sebab dia tak sama macam incident light. So this is as if the light is coming from a point. This is your focal point. The focal point for your concave lens is behind the lens. And it is diverging. Okay. So the focal point of converging lens is on the opposite side as the object. Belakang lah. As in um, tempat yang sepatutnya light lalu is your focal point. The focal point is real. Again, the, where the light should pass through is always going to be real. Macam mirror, where should it pass through? It should be reflected here. So this is real. Kat sini, lens, it should be passing through here. So this is where it is real. In this case, um, it passes through, but the focal point is behind where it should be passing. So this is virtual. The focal point lah, at least. The ray memang pass through point. So the focal point of diverging lens is on the same side as the object. The focal point is virtual and we write this as negative for our 1 over u, 1 over v equals to 1 over f equation. So lens pun pakai equation yang sama. 
So we have another equation for lens. It's called the lens maker equation. So tak tahu lah betul-betul optometrist pakai ke tak, but they call it lens maker equation. 1 over f is equal to n refractive index minus 1 equals to, sorry, equals to bracket 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2, where r1 and r2 are positive for convex lenses and negative for concave lenses. Just remember kalau converging for both mirror and lenses, positive. Diverging for both mirror and lenses, f is negative. It's both it's just the name je lah yang kena flip. But anything converging, positive F. Anything diverging, negative F. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the sign convention for thin lenses. Macam bosan sikit kan? Uh, bear with me. So object location, P ataupun we call this U, V. Uh, if the object location is in front of the lens. So kata je lukis. Okay, anggap ni lens. So, your object location is here. Um, in front of the lens, this is your incident light coming. You should draw it into different color. So, if your object location is in front of the lens ataupun tempat incident light coming from, then you would have positive U uh, value. And if your if it is at the back of the lens, your incident light is here, but your object is here. Torchlight kat sini. Kenapa torchlight rupa macam ni? Torchlight kat sini, lampu kat sini, tapi object kat belakang. So your object punya U will be negative. Ada cases macam tu. Tapi I don't think our quiz has that question. So your object is always in front of the mirror, sorry, in front of the lens and where the light is coming from. Tak. Pernah lagi lah saya jumpa soalan objek dekat belakang and light daripada tempat lain. Tak ada lah. Untuk syllabus kita tak ada. So your object here is positive and for image location, if it is over here, let's draw it as a different color red. If your object, sorry, if your image is formed, if your image is formed here, remember your lens is supposed to let light pass through, either converging or diverging. Tak kisahlah. But if your image is formed here, then it is virtual. So but this is not where the light is supposed to be. But if it is formed here, it is real because it follows like the, the law, right? The law of light. They pass through. So kalau image form kat sini, baguslah, real. And then the lens ready untuk lens maker equation. Hmm. I don't think you have to know this. Abaikan. Focal length untuk converging lenses positive. Focal length untuk diverging lenses negative. That's that's the part that you need to know. Okay. Question. A converging lens. Kita nak habis sikit lagi. A converging lens with two curved surfaces has a front surface. So a converging lens with two curved surfaces. Converging. Converging is convex. Convex kembung. So dia macam ni rupa dia. Two curved surfaces, surfaces has a front surface with radius of curvature. Tak tahulah macam mana R1 ni rupa dia. So R1 is 10 cm and back surface curvature R2 is 20 cm. Now remember the R1 and R2 for a converging lens is positive. So positive lah. Eh, 20 dengan 10 silap. Ni 10. So, this will be positive 10 and this will be positive 20. Walaupun seorang depan, seorang belakang. But remember, for converging lens, R1 and R2 sama-sama akan positive. So, in this case, we have 10 over here and 20. And it is made from a material with an index of refraction 2.5. So, this guy is 2.5. So, 2.5 minus 1. Use your calculator, you would get 22.5 is 1 over f. Therefore, your f is 4.44 times 10 to the minus 2. Mm, what is that? That is 4.4. 4.44 4, 4 centimeter from the lens. Okay, so that is your f. Quite easy, you just have to know the signs 
punya convention. Okay, next one. A contact lens is made of plastic. Surprise. Mestilah contact lens daripada plastik kan, tekan gelas pula. So, made of plastic with an index refraction of 1.5. The lens has an outer radius of curvature, positive 2. Kat sini kita tak tahu contact lens tu converging ke, diverging ke. But it gave us the positive and negative. So, that's good. So, outer radius, I don't know what outer is R1 ke R2 ke. But I'm just going to assume it's R1, positive 2 centimeter. And inner radius of curvature, R2 positive 2.5. So here we know that our contact lens here is a converging lens based on the value it's given. Sometimes your contact lens can be diverging. It depends on your eyes. Punya masalah lah kan. So sometimes ada orang rambut jauh, ada orang rambut dekat, ada orang ada astigmatism yang silau-silau tu. So your lens has to cater for that and of course dia akan ada different values. Okay. So, positive, positive, N is 1.5. Just plug it in, you would get your 1 over F as 5. Therefore, your F is 0 0.2. Next one. A plano convex lens, N is equal to 1.5, is flat on one side. The word here is plano, flat, convex, kembung. So, it looks like this. Is flat on one side. What must be the radius of curvature of the curved side? It's asking what is the R over here to produce a converging lens of focal length 20. So it wants to produce a focal a converging lens. So we know that it's supposed to have like a positive R value. But what about the flat side? Flat side. So here 1 over F is equal to N minus 1. This is 1.5. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. The R2 here is minus infinity. Sebab dia flat on one side. I don't know why. Tapi memang kalau dia flat, dia infi minus infinity. Kalau flat, eh? kalau curve, either converging ataupun diverging. Kalau converging, positive R. Kalau diverging, negative R. So here it said, it tells us it's converging. So we know that our value, other value R is going to be positive. So 1 over F, 1.5 minus 1, 1 over R1 plus ataupun minus 1 over infinity. This would give us 0. So 1 over R1. Kalau ada tambah pun sama je lah kan. Kenapa nak kena negatif? Hmm. I don't know about this one. Tapi flat memang infinity. Kenapa dia negatif tu saya tak sure. Okay, so, but it's not on your quiz. So, 1 over lambda, eh, lambda berada, 1 over infinity, you would get this as 0. Okay, so what you're left is with the curved side. So, 1 over 2, 1 over 0 0.2 from here, 1.5 minus 1, and then you can solve for your R1. So, here the trick is to know that the flat side would not have any R. Ataupun the R is just infinity. Tapi dia tak, dia tak akan contribute to the lens maker equation. Flat things don't contribute. So kita hapuskan dia. Jadi kosong. Okay. So now we're going to learn about constructing the ray diagram. Sikit lagi, sikit lagi. Bear with me. Maybe habis 12.30. That's my approximation. Okay. So sama juga. Uh, macam mirror. But the focal point berbeza. Okay. Remember for concave. The focal point was in front here. Okay, so you cannot converge. Sini. Lepas tu, kalau convex. This is our principal axis. Convex, dia kembung. And it will be diverging. As if it is coming from a focal point behind the mirror. This is the virtual part. This is the real part. Okay. Um, this is mirror. Eh? So now we're talking about lens. Our lens for a converging lens, the focal point should be at the back. Ataupun kat mana light should pass through. So here you have your ray passing through F and then your other ray, you start from the top of your object. Ray number one through here. Ray number two through the C. Mana C dia? I don't see the C. 
Where is it? No, it's not through the C. It's through the center of the lens, sorry, that is mirror. So the first ray is drawn parallel to the first principal axis and then passes through the focal point. Yang ni sama lah, macam mirror. This is ray number one. Sorry, I'm too confused by the mirror. So the second ray is drawn through the center of the lens. So tadi kita lalu C kan? Kita lalu F and then we also lalu C for mirrors. For lens, we kena lalu tengah-tengah lens. The center of the lens. So this is your ray number two. So this is the difference between the mirror and lens. The image position is located on the cross section. Of course, ke mana yang cross section tu? Kat situlah your image. So you, here you started from the top of your object. Therefore, your intersection would also point out the top of your object. In this case, your image is inverted, diminished and virtual. Eh, sorry, real. Real, inverted, diminished. Okay. okay, and then this one is tadi tu converging lens or convex lens. This is diverging lens or concave. Sikit lagi. Okay, so here you have your object. We start from the top. Ray number one, parallel to the principal axis and goes as if it's coming from the focal point but it is diverged as if it's coming from the focal point, but it is diverged. The focal point is the same place as the object. Ni adalah diverging. And then the second ray, this is ray number one, the second ray passes through the center of the lens. Where does it intersect? Over here. So this is your image. This intersection point is the top of your image. So here you can say that it is virtual. The image is virtual upright, diminished, because it is small. Sorry, I said that engaging sangat, sebab kita nak laju. Okay, so of course, if we have different distances from the lens, we would have different properties for a converging lens. So sama juga macam mirror, tadi pun kita ada different distances for converging lens and we found out we had like upright, kadang-kadang kadang inverted, kadang-kadang magnified. Sama juga kat sini. So here, if the object distance is greater than the focal point, what you get is image is real and inverted. Ni boleh lukis sendiri for your ray diagram or you can refer to the table. If your object distance is less than the focal point, this is your object, what you get is something that is virtual. Your image is virtual and upright. And then if um, this is for a diverging lens ataupun concave lens, so again, your focal point must be the same place as your object. So if your object is greater than F, therefore what you get is virtual and upright. What hmm? oh, is this for all cases? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, physics number one. What is the table for lens? We're almost done with chapter 11. Good job, yeah. We don't have a table. Oh, we do, we do. Okay, it's on page 164. So, image by diverging lenses, any distance. Oh, this is like convex lens. In this case, it's concave lens, but the diverging. So for any distance, okay, it is virtual, upright, and diminished. Sama lah, V-U-D. Virtual, virtual, upright, and diminished. Sama macam, macam, con, sama macam converging mirror. Sama macam diverging mirror. Virtual, upright, and diminished. Okay, there's a table in your book. Okay, so no worries about that. Tak payah hafal pun. Remember, your quiz is open book-ish. Nobody specified if you can't open your book. So, Okay, lens equation. 1 over u plus 1 over v equals to 1 over f. Sama juga, u is the distance of your object from the lens. 
V is the distance of your image from the lens and F is your focal point. Remember, if your focal point is real or it is where the light should be passing through, positive F. Kalau virtual, negative F. Oh, you have it here. Okay, I already tell you, told you this one. It's also in your book. Um, Ada apa-apa yang baru tak saya nak kena cerita sini. Front or virtual side. Back. So if your object is in front of the mirror, positive. If your object is behind the mirror, P is negative. If your image is formed here where the incident light is, it is negative sebab virtual. This is positive sebab re real. Okay, semua benda yang kita dah cover. And magnification is also the same equation. M is H image over H object equals to minus. Jangan lupa minus ni. V over U. This equation can be used for both converging and diverging mirrors. If you want to know what is the sign convention, it should be the same as mirror. Nanti korang tengok balik. Okay, combination of thin lenses, kita takkan belajar. So we are done with chapter 11. Yay. So tomorrow kita akan continue with chapter 12. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. Asalkan bukan soalan quiz. You can ask me anything related to chapter 11 and 12 as long as it is not the exact question. So, of course, um, there is no rule to what you can, you can or cannot do with the quiz. It is from Monday to Friday. Please get it done. It's only 20 multiple choice questions. Saya nampak ada yang dah download, ada yang belum download. If you haven't looked at it, please do. And sambil belajar, sambil buat. Okay? So, all the best. I know you can do it. It's just MCQ. And hopefully, you can get like 100% for this one. Untuk cover balik yang lost marks from test 2. Okay? So, take care everyone. Have a great rest of the day. And don't forget to have your lunch. Bye-bye. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Bye-bye.